Um, the the SKA telescope, I'll talk while I don't have an HDMI connector on this machine, so he's just changing the connector. The uh, SKA telescope is an international project that's uh, been actually going since the early 90s on an astronomer-only basis. It's now reached a point where uh, there is design and engineering starting to take place on the creation of the telescope. The telescope won't be complete until 2024. It's split between two countries. It's, uh, about one third of it is isn't going to be in Australia and about two thirds in South Africa. The project office for managing the design, the acquisition, the deployment, and the um, in getting it operational is in the UK uh, at Jodrell Bank. Those of you that have some knowledge of astronomy will know that Jodrell Bank was one of the first radio telescopes produced in the world. Um, there are currently 12 countries involved who have stepped up and said that they will participate in the funding of this. The U.S. is not one of those countries at this point in time. Can you just scroll it down? Sure. Tell me where. So what's the purpose of this telescope? In one sentence, it's to try to find uh, radio signals that occurred in the first fraction of a second after the Big Bang, as the universe was created. You know, I don't know any, I haven't, I've learned a little bit about astronomy, but those of you who are scientists in the audience and are interested in this, I think the first stages of the creation of the universe was, was whatever matter there was, was not very, not very well formed, <laughs> right? And so the first, there we go. So the, the goals, can you read that at all? No. Okay, well, let me tell you what it says. <laughs> very briefly. Yeah, I'm doing that. That's, can you read it now? There we go. You must be able to read that. Sorry. Yeah, that, that doesn't work. That's about as good as I can do, I think, right there. Does that help? That is the wrong text. So I'll just tell you, so probe it, the first stage, the first goal is to probe the ages of the universe when nothing was ionized, right? And find out what what was the what what existed, right? And then, as uh, whatever the matter was, as it ionized, f figure out what that was. So this is this is a significant scientific challenge. It's a significant big data challenge, and it requires very high speed networking. So I'll just go back after the after the, the first stages of the universe, galaxies start, the galaxies started to form. And this instrument is intended to try and figure out how that happened and uh, from there uh, find out more about what are in the existing galaxies, right? So this, this is perhaps the, one of the most ambitious scientific projects that mankind has devised. Right? Along the ways, trying to figure out you know, what, why is there a conflict in the universe between what happens at the large scale and why does that conflict with Einstein's uh, theories of relativity, etc. So here's, here's uh, a cartoon of the structure of this. Those things that are pointing up are antennae. I'm going to build about 5,000 of those. In Australia, they're going to be spread between Australia and New Zealand. And in South Africa, they're going to go from uh, a desert on the uh, western side of south northwest South Africa up through Africa uh, as far as um, Kenya. Um, the reason for building this number of telescopes spread out like this is, as Eitan already knows, <laughs> to uh, uh, capture very weak signals and be able to 
pull them together from all the antennae over a wide baseline and digitize and correlate those signals, integrate them together, and then pass them on to the process layer, which is going to be a sizable computer. So here are some of the data rates involved in this. So on the left-hand side, you'll see the antennae, right? You see at the base of the antennae, there are some electronics. And as the data comes out of the antennae, there are actually two different, three different kinds of antennae. On the top side, you'll see that it's about 16 terabits a second out of one set of antennae. Those are going to be in Australia, actually. And the lower antennae is about 20 gigabits a second. So as they go into the correlator, data rates start to uh, reduce, but it gets to at the top, it's about four petabytes a second, at the bottom, it's 24 terabits per second. And what you see as it goes on the right-hand side is that there is a, a correlator to be built, which is the very small yellow and green dots to, to take these digital signals and turn them into something that can be computed which is the image processing block on the right there. Here's a, uh, a little bit more detail on this. So the data comes from the antennae on the left, and here's a notional architecture about how to build the uh, computing components here. So where, where is this project right now? There, there um, are consortia that are forming. I was last week with, with the correlator consortia. There's uh, 12 different countries in that consortia, primarily astronomers. And uh, what we were working on was to put together an art, a response to the project office saying how, over the next two to three years, the correlator would be planned. For the correlator, there are a number of different technologies that can be used, anything from FPGAs to uh, GPUs. There's a lot of difference of opinion about how to build it. There's a lot of difference of opinion about the technologies to be used. And um, it was very interesting to listen to the astronomers that were there who are familiar with this technology debating how to figure out how to choose what to do. And that's where this whole project is. The science is dis defined. You can find the science definitions on the SKA telescope website, and it's skatelescope.org. But how to actually process this data, both at the correlator stage and at the uh, science data processing stage, which is what produces what astronomers can analyze, has not been defined, but there is a two to three year process for doing this laid out. And the first acquisition of hardware is scheduled to take place somewhere in 2017 or 2018. So that's a very high level review of this. Um, the, as you saw, the data rates are the kinds of data rates that uh, anybody in the room thought that they might be involved in doing something at that data rate. Certainly I didn't, right? Uh, Infonetics design for networks is actually very interesting in the correlator because it's an it's a all-to-all connection of, that has to be built there. Um, and the data processing is just starting to be thought of. Um, there are several US companies that are quite deeply involved in the process of design, uh, but there is no funding out of the US government planned at this point in time. And there is a consortium of US companies that is starting to form to work on this. It's a consortium of US companies and uh, industry uh, and, so, and government organizations and academic organizations. If you're interested in learning more about any of this, talk to me. Right? I can give you a lot more information than this. So um, any very specific questions that can be answered in 30 seconds or so, and then we'll go to lunch. Yes? Are these radio waves that they're trying to find, are they just widely dispersed?
dispersed, which is so intricate. So no, they they are widely dispersed, but in a very specific way, oh. right? The uh, the antennae are 30 meters across, which is about as big as they can be built, right? And the engineering of the antennae is extremely interesting in its own right. Very high, very, very accurate antennae have to be built. Um, general, general Dynamics in the US is probably the, the leading contender for building those. So if you, any other? So I was reading, this thing puts out one exabyte per day, does that sound right? Something like that, yes. Yeah. Yes, is it, I mean, I, here's the data rates. If there are 3,000 dishes, you see the bottom line, the highest resolution for deep imaging is 391 terabytes a second, terabits a second, right? If you want some of these, I can point you at this. Okay, this is a this is this is some slides that come off the tele, SKA telescope website, right. so they're publicly available. Okay, let's have some lunch. Thank you very much.